From KGW, this is The Good Stuff. It's thrilling. It's, it's breathtaking when people come looking for wildlife inspiration. I think most of the people are, are pretty awestruck at what Oregon has to offer. Tonight on The Good Stuff, this beautiful winter scene can be found right here in Oregon. We're taking in the wildlife that's also inspiring artists. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Brittany Falkers. And we start tonight with another edition of Grant's Getaways. This time we're headed to Eastern Oregon for a site that's really special this time of year. The snow falls heavy and the powder runs deep as the temperature hovers near 20 in Baker County. Ed McGez and his crew call it another day at the best office in Oregon, a 12,000 acre Elkhorn wildlife area near North Powder. Quite a bunch of them's coming in from off the sagebrush. We'll have somewhere between one and 200 deer. Not just deer, but Rocky Mountain elk herds get a daily ration of alfalfa to keep them in the timber rather than valley ranch lands. Here is your chance to see them, the Anthony Creek Feeding Station at the John McKean Memorial, where photos and a new information kiosk tell the story of an Oregon wildlife director who helped establish the site in 1971. This is really quite an opportunity. Nearby, wildlife artist Paul Holscher is giddy as a school kid. Coats are beautiful and there's no effort there at all. He's sketching models for his next painting. Oh, I see you've got them in just about every possible position yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Down in the snow and everything. You got it's, a, that big bowl too. Yes, he did a, a nice little cheesecake pose just for a second there. Holscher says it's rare to get so close to so many elk, yet he loves each minute of it. Very valuable experience for somebody who likes animals and likes to, to make art of animals. That much is certain for the Minnesota native who made Baker City his home a dozen years ago. Peterson Gallery offers the chance to check out his wonderful work, Wildlife in Action. Life isn't very sedentary for very long, and that's something that just has, has gotten me a lot. Enjoyed drawing as long as I can remember it at a very early age. Paul discovered his artistic gift as a child. College provided formal training. Now he is among the region's best at capturing Oregon wildlife with a brush, paint, and canvas. It's very moving and it seems like something should be done so that it doesn't just pass without some recognition. Holscher is a big believer that nature is inspiring and the days he spends in the field are full of promise and cherished. It's thrilling, it's, it's breathtaking. When people come looking for wildlife inspiration, I think most of the people are, are pretty awestruck at what Oregon has to offer. It is a very special state. On the Elkhorn Wildlife Area. It is a terrific place to be. With photographer Jeff Kastner, Grant McComey, KGW. Portland's favorite Powell's Books is getting ready for a big sale this weekend and they're hoping for your support. It's their friends and family sale where you can get 30% off nearly everything in the store. It happens to come after a really rough week for many of our local businesses. Powell's was closed all last week for the winter storm, so they're hoping to see customers come back in force. We have this event just to celebrate our stores and our customers and our employees, and it's a really fun way to come out and get a chance to look at all of the great displays in the store. Uh, people are super excited. The energy is really wild and fun. The sale is happening at all three Powell's locations this Saturday and Sunday. Oh, it's going to be a good sale, and that big book sale is our inspiration for today's social question. I asked you to share your favorite recommendations for a good read, and we got some really awesome responses. So get your pen and uh, paper ready. Write some of these down if you're looking for a good read. Carrie Bear says, starts us off with one of my favorite genres, 
fantasy. She says the All Souls trilogy is phenomenal. There are witches, vampires, demons, time travel, romance, villains, and oh so much more. She says everyone she's recommended this series to has loved it. This one that you see on the screen right there, A Discovery of Witches, is the first book in the series. And hey, if you love sci-fi, Jewel has a good option for you. She says Project Hail Mary is one of her most favorite sci-fi books. Set in the near future, it centers on a junior high school teacher turned astronaut who wakes up from a coma afflicted with amnesia. Okay, very intrigued by that short description. And if you want to stay firmly planted on planet Earth, but still want to get away, MJ has this recommendation. She says, if you're craving the magic of Italy and can't get there, check out this new series of romance novels with love from Italy. She says it's a fun sensory journey of great food, gorgeous sightseeing, and fantastic characters. Oh, I'm all in for that. And how about a mystery thriller? Veronica says, Tribal Honor is an action-packed, sit-at-the-edge-of-your-seat page-turner. And this is so cool. Author T.G. Brown is from Oregon, and the book is set in the state as well. Thanks for that recommendation, Veronica. And okay, here's one more read where most of the action takes place in Oregon in the Willamette Valley. C suggests the Emberverse series. It's a post-apocalyptic al alternate reality focusing on how characters survive the loss of 600 years of technological progress. That one's gotta be a page turner. And hey, we wanna see your book recommendations. You can share them or just any photos of the good stuff happening in your life by texting us. Send your text and photos to that number on your screen, 503-226-5088. You can also email me at thegoodstuffkgw.com. A Forest Grove man was just honored for his life-saving efforts. He jumped in to rescue his uncle during a wakeboarding accident this past summer. 20-year-old Ryan Perez was given the Red Cross Certificate of Merit Award during last night's Forest Grove City Council meeting. Ryan put his lifeguarding and first aid skills to work back in July. He and his family were out on Detroit Lake when his uncle did a trick on the wakeboard and ended up face planting in the water. He wasn't responding, so Ryan jumped in and pulled him out. He then went through a concussion protocol and treated him for shock while they headed back to shore to first responders. All I remember is taking my shirt off and diving in and just trying to pull him to the boat as quick as I could. Ryan, you exemplify the mission of the Red Cross to prevent and alleviate human suffering in the faces of emergencies, and we commend you for your willingness to help. Pretty amazing, right? The certificate, by the way, the Certificate of Merit is the highest award given by the Red Cross to people who save or sustain a life through skills they learned in a Red Cross training course. I always say it, it's so important to take all of those CPR training, first aid, you might save a life. Well, hey, listen to this. A Long Island man is thanking his daughter for saving his life. He has a genetic disorder that he says would have killed him if he didn't get a new kidney. Paising Chang shows us how his daughter made the brave decision to give the gift of life. Matthew Carlson hands flowers to his daughter, Stephanie Trotty, but the 52 year old says he can't thank her enough for giving him the gift of life. It's inconceivable, um, you know, I have heart kidney now, and if you really think about it, I made this kidney. <laughs> so um, I thank her every day, you know, I thank God. Carlson suffered from polycystic kidney disease, painful and terminal, inherited from his mother who succumbed to the disease in 2015. There's nothing you could do to stop it. If you have it, it's going to get you. As the disease progressed, it became clear he would need a transplant. Stephanie was a match, and she did not carry the same gene that gave her dad and grandmother diseased kidneys. It's actually just a miracle in itself that, you know, my father raised me and I could give back. These doctors were part of a team that performed the transplant. We did an operation uh, through her belly button, a minimally invasive operation, um, and we uh, took her left kidney and my partner transplanted it 
into Matthew. Now, in this case, Stephanie was helping her father, but doctors hope that this story helps encourage more living donations. The surgery is minimally invasive and the recovery time is very short. Post surgery, it's wonderful. I, I'm back to normal. I'm back to my regular routine. It's been two weeks. Dr. Grodstein says transplanting kidneys from living donors generates better outcomes and they can get donors out of the hospital in a few days. Matthew's diseased kidneys, which had inflated to the size of footballs, were removed. In its place, a single kidney from his daughter. It brought tears to my eyes. It was probably one of the best days of my life. There's other people out there and you can help that person. It's wonderful. Gosh, just an amazing story. That gift of life, organ donation. It's really, truly amazing, isn't it? Next here on The Good Stuff, even animals need companionship. After losing her best friend, a pet duck was hit with grief. See how a Facebook post likely saved her life. Welcome back to the good stuff. You know, grief, unfortunately, is something that we all experience at some point. And it seems ducks do too. Riley Mack with our sister station in Grand Rapids, Michigan, shares the story of a love lost and found again. Pure white snow. It's beautiful. Marks a new beginning. Definitely. Such is the case for Sophia the duck. <laughs> On her third birthday, her uh, aunt and uncle decided to just drop off a couple ducks at our house. So we became um, animal people. <laughs> Lindsay Fleeser and her kids, Josie and Brayden, were surprised by new additions to the family. She was first given two ducks. They were best of friends. Sophia and Evie. Oh, they're pretty cute ducks. They were together all the time. But even more surprised by what came next. About two weeks ago, we only saw one for a couple days. So my husband went and checked in the woods and we saw a big pile of feathers. So we knew we had an issue. I'm thinking some 
some sort of wildlife got to it. Just as it would for any human, grief came for Sophia. The first couple days after the duck was lost, she was really vocal. We could hear her constantly at night. So I don't know if that was crying or what that was. I mean, they were together for like four years, so I think they had a pretty close bond. It was a little sad and disheartening. That feeling couldn't last long. Sophia needed a companion for the season, or it would take her next. When the temperatures got really cold, we knew that she would not survive. Inspiring a bit of matchmaking. We posted on Facebook to see if there was anybody who would be willing to let us adopt their duck. Single female, loves long walks by the pond, bright orange feet. <laughs> The usual. <laughs> Sophia's were the only prince in the freshly fallen snow until a new path crossed her way <laughs> in the form of the four webbed feet of Lucy and Goosey. We were able to find somebody that had two ducks. They originally had four and they lost two of them to wildlife. They said, please come get them. Just as sure as snow in Michigan, a new beginning came for Sophia the duck. I think she's more happy. Um, I'm hoping there are, our new ones are a girl and a boy so they have baby ducks so we have more and more. Grand Haven's most eligible quacklerette found what she needed all along. Might get more, you never know. A flock. We're kind of a duck family. Of her own. Cue the waddling off into the sunset. Oh my gosh, this is just the sweetest story. You know, social connection is so important for us humans, and I guess it's pretty important for ducks too. <laughs> what a quacktastic story. <laughs> All right, straight ahead. Did your favorite movie from the last year get an Oscar nod? A look at the nominees when we come back. But first, we want to check out this beautiful shot of, wow, look at this, a double rainbow sent in to us from Eugene. Sharon says that her son Troy took this on the Lane Community College campus just yesterday. That is some beauty after all that nasty winter weather.
Welcome back to the good stuff. The Academy Award nominations were announced just this morning with a couple of films racking up several nods. Mark Barger talked with the man who's covered the Oscars for decades about the nominees. Welcome to one of the most exciting days of the year. It was especially exciting for Oppenheimer, as that film led the way at this morning's Academy Award nominations with 13, including Best Picture, Best Director for Christopher Nolan, Best Actor for Killian Murphy, and Supporting Bids for Emily Blunt and Robert Downey Jr. You guys ever think about dying? Barbie is also in the Best Picture hunt, eight nominations overall, including supporting nods for America Ferreira and Ryan Gosling. But Margot Robbie missed out in the Best Actress category, as did Greta Gerwig for Best Director. Money flows freely here now. I do love that money, sir. Killers of the Flower Moon earned 10 nominations, including Best Picture and Best Director for Martin Scorsese. Lily Gladstone's Best Actress nod is the first for a Native American, but her co-star Leonardo DiCaprio missed out on a Best Actor bid. In your sad face, makes me discover angry feelings for you. Emma Stone's performance in Poor Things gives her a shot at her second Best Actress win. Co-star Mark Ruffalo is also up for Best Supporting Actor and the film for Best Picture. Bingo. No, no bingo, Ned. These books have nothing to do with African-American studies. American fiction is among the other Best Picture contenders, as well as The Holdovers, the biopic Maestro, Past Lives, Anatomy of a Fall, and The Zone of Interest. The Oscar winners will be revealed March 10th. Mark Barger, NBC News. Now, along with Killian Murphy, Best Actor nominations went to Bradley Cooper, Coleman Domingo, Paul Giamatti, and Jeffrey Wright. And joining Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone in the Best Actress race are Annette Bening, Sandra Huller, and Carrie Mulligan. It's going to be exciting. Well, hey, still to come, Northwest chain Burgerville is expanding for the first time in eight years. We're going to tell you about the new location coming soon. But first, let's take a look at some more of your awesome book recommendations. I am writing these down, getting my winter and then summer reading <laughs> list all together. So thank you for sending these in.
right, let's talk about some good food. Fans of the Northwest chain Burgerville will be excited to learn the restaurant is adding its first new locations in eight years. One is coming to Wilsonville. The spot in the Argyle Square Shopping Center should open in late spring or early summer. Other new locations are expected to open in Salem and Bend later this year. Ooh, now I want a burger and fries. <laughs> okay, that is all the time that we have for you tonight. But I wanted to leave a little extra time to share some more of your favorite book recommendations. So get out your pen and paper, maybe that notepad in your phone so that you can write some of these down and get to reading. Literacy rocks. <laughs> Thanks for taking a little time for the good stuff.